Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Evil Empire. I'm your host, Evil Empire, and this week's feature is... Jund Sacrifice. So, this is a deck that has been a long, well-established player in Historic, but did receive a few new cards from two recent sets. And we're going to go over some of the changes and additions to the deck and how it's kind of shaped into the new metagame uh, with this video. Uh, I would also take a look back at, I think it was episode number six of this series, which was called Jun Citadel, where I was basically playing a very similar deck, except using a lot of ramp creatures to get to Jun, uh, to get to Bolas' Citadel, um, which actually, strangely enough, I think has also kind of emerged again, or re-emerged again, as an archetype in Historic with the printing of Prosperous Innkeeper. Um, but so many different variants of the Jund archetype. This one is especially going to rely on two main pieces. Um, Trail of Crumbs. Obviously, you're basically working with the Cat Oven Shell. So you've got a whole bunch of things around that, like Woe Strider, Mayhem Devil, that kind of make your cat better. Um, claim the Firstborn to grab um, some creatures, maybe. Uh, and then, so besides Trail of Crumbs as your big draw engine, which you can actually just trigger for free and then pay the one, uh, with Cauldron Familiar, you can also always rely on Corvold, and that's why he's been increased to a four of in the deck and i think uh it's just a tremendous card in the metagame um which is a, really a creature focused metagame i think right now again it's kind of shifted back from being super duper focused on instants and sorceries after the release of the mystical archive um now that things have kind of re-established themselves in, in this order of we got a lot of creature decks running around um so this this one especially makes it tough for creatures to attack in combat because of the fact that they have to have trample and if they don't the the cauldron familiar oven combo just brick walls any creature and the really sick thing about this one in particular this uh, new iteration of the deck is incorporating binding the old gods so if you do get chapter three of binding to go off it's just like it used to be with status statue um, people would use the status part of that card to give mayhem devil death touch when they had a bunch of sack triggers lined up and you can just one touch with mayhem devil having uh, one damage with mayhem devil having death touch just ping off your entire entire opponent's board even if they have you know four or five creatures you just give them one damage each and they all die um so that's a really cool thing that came out of kaldheim and then as far as kind of updates uh from the newer sets we're also trying out one ranger class this is primarily in the deck to be uh, a card against control um to give us a little bit of um better power attacking them uh and then also can, I've not yet done it. I've not ever activated level three on the Ranger class because it's only a one of. But in theory, if you were playing like a long game against control, you could grind them out by playing off the top of your deck a bunch of creatures. Um, so we are going to play this deck again in best of three as I did last week. Um, this iteration of the deck came to me from a post on Arena Decklists. Um, so definitely go take a look at that account. If you don't know Arena, at Arena Decklist on Twitter, they do a lot of um, excellent retweeting of historic and standard decks. Um, so do check them out to find the exact list that I have here. Um, and then also you could take a look through the sideboard if you want. Um, if you're a best of three player, for example, um, like we've got some Thought Seizes, a couple of those, Soul Guide Lantern, Noxious Grasp, and the rest of it. Um, but do always take a look in the description for the link to the deck list. Make sure that you like and subscribe the video as we take a look here at Jun Sacrifice and Historic Ranked. Yeah, uh, this is fine. If we draw the red, we could really unlock the hand. But it's just a question of will we draw it, so we'll see. Trail can help. Trail can help get us there. Yeah, so we'll go turn one Cauldron Familiar into turn two Trail. Opponent is on Mountain, Mountain, Wily Goblin, so the Goblin's deck. All right, so I think here we're going to shock in for Goose and then get in with the cat. No. Okay. So next up. Opponent on four mana. Matron. What's the target going to be here for the old matron? It's Skirk Prospector. Okay, so that means they have Muxus in hand. Drew the red mana. So we're going to slam that untapped and play Mayhem Devil. And then we're going to make it so that the opponent has to sack the Prospector when they play Muxus next turn. Because otherwise it's a problem. They get to basically make infinite mana if they draw a Krenko and... Um, We'd rather not, 
let them just dump their hand after Muxus, you know, because they might have if they like if they don't hit the haste enabler off Muxus, they might have it in their hand. Being able to um, sack a bunch of creatures and get Prospector, um, you know, to make a bunch of mana is a problem. So we'll do this during their upkeep. So they don't even have the Prospector out yet. And they can't make enough mana when they play the Prospector and then play the Muxus. They'll have to sack the Prospector as well. We need it to go away. That's very important here. We need them to hit poorly off Muxus, and then we need also for this Skirk Prospector to go away when they get Muxus into play. Yep, so now they have the six by sacking their entire board as well as that treasure. But we had to make it so they didn't keep the Prospector. That would have been disaster. Nice, we get to deal them three to the dome. Yeah, you love to see it. Boom. That's not terrible, but it's not great either. Alright, so opponent gets in with Muxus. I think this is a pretty easy, easy chump for the cat. They hit Prospector and Warchief, but it was a pretty bad hit otherwise. You know, they looked at six, they only got two. So, can't complain. I had the better of that one. Sorry there's no game sound for this. Uh, I had my OBS settings wrong. Alright, so draw another red, which feels pretty dope. Um, some thought to playing the devil, uh, to get two devils online, but I think the better play is trail into Scorching Dragonfire. <coughs> Excuse me. Opponent having a good long think about this food token. There we go. Now we can ping away the prospector, but I think we'll just wait until upkeep to get rid of it. Because again, um, we want to do this during upkeep because it will clear the mana going into their first main. So we'll just go ahead and put it over to their turn. Dragonfire and the ping will come in upkeep. So. It's kind of equivalent if we do it on our turn, but whatever. If they're going to do anything in response, then that's just for the best. But I don't think they could have any responses because these lists don't really run gem palm anymore. But like, say they tried to gem palm away my devil here, that would really be great because I could just ping off the prospector, get rid of the other one, and then their pros their their gem palm just deals one to my devil. But that's the thinking behind getting it during upkeep is that you just you give the opponent the opportunity to make a mistake. I think is the reason to do it there. It's pretty debatable. I mean, you could easily do it main phase on your own turn, but just let them try to react. You know, let them try. All right, the Chieftain, but they don't attack? All right, whatever, that's weird. All right, let's get the Double Devil. No? Okay. Go for this setup instead. Should probably just get rid of Chieftain now, but pass it back to them. Alright, Krenko is a problem. Do I resolve it? I guess. Ugh. Yeah, that feels like a pretty bad mistake, actually, now that I'm on the other side of it. Ugh. Yeah, that was a big blunder. 
All right, still got to get rid of it, though. Even though I made the mistake, I got to uh, try to salvage something out of it. So get the two sack triggers, get the chieftain. They'll make three extra goblins that they shouldn't have made. Will not get to use any of those trail triggers because I just misplayed so badly. that This deck is very complicated to pilot. The decision trees are, you know, there's a lot of them. So, still in the learning phase, am I? So before I ping it down, they make three one ones, pass it back to me. I'm gonna basically shock in Corvold, windmill slam style, and pray that that's good enough. I think I'm gonna sack a trail or maybe a goose, the cat, yeah. The cat wants to go in the graveyard anyway. A ping away a 1-1 one, one that shouldn't be there. Yeah, basically they shouldn't have any of those 1-1s. One, they should just start making 1-1s one, with Krenko now, but... What can I say? Sometimes you make mistakes. So Prospector gives them more mana, but they don't really have anything to do with the mana. And I'm about to hit them for like... Eight or nine. Alright, so in comes the Muxus. Goose goes on chump duty. Wish we could sack the goose to oven or something, but no such luck. Really need something to make a food here. So let's do the food making, and then before we sack it, we're going to bring back, or, or sorry, cast the devil of mayhem okay opponent seen enough so gadrak in binding in doomblade in fatal push in thoughts he's out then what to cut um, well, cut like a, uh, what, 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 well, cut a pair of binding because it's kind of slow, I don't know, oh yeah, we want the claims too, those are good here. Corvold, cut, what else? One cat. Nothing else looks too terribly good. Run it like that. All right, let's see how game two plays out. We'll get two looks at this match by winning the first game. We put ourselves in the best position. Sorry, my cat's making a stir on my desk right now. Let's see if she pops her little head into frame. Alright, so opponent leads mountain. Nothing. I'm going to shock in the oven. Oh, oh, hello. Hello, cat. So Overgrown Tomb tapped. They have Conspicuous Snoop that's revealing a mountain and another land underneath it. Opponent's got the War Chief. I'm going to go ahead and block and activate Oven. All right, attack with familiar? No. Leave it on chump duty. Mm. Ugh. All right. Chandra's pretty big problem status. Ah. 
yeah, we needed that red, though. We needed that for red mana, though. Ugh. Feels bad, man. They're not going to give us the extra sack trigger by attacking. We need to draw red mana very badly. Okay, we drew Trail of Crumbs instead. Attack with the familiar. Get the extra sack trigger this way, at least. Oh, that was a very unfortunate timing, and they killed our red mana. Like, what can we do? Yeah. It's a game of resources. You have them, you win. You don't have them, you lose. Opponent, of course, has all the red mana they need, right? <laughs> the advantage of a multicolor deck, or sorry, a single color deck over a multicolor deck. Yeah, I've had enough. This is getting silly. All right, on to game three. Let's bring in at least one Thoughtseize to take their Chandra. We'll cut Harvest for it. I think that's the correct choice here. Bring in one more binding, cut one Corvold. Yeah. Drew the Thoughtseize. So we'll do that turn one. Take Chandra. Hey. I love when a plan comes together. Alright, so Familiar goes down T2, along with the Tapland in Overgrown Tomb. Well, it's got Double Abrade. That's going to be a problem when we go for Corvold on turn 4. I think this is just a Bajagantha turn. Like, if we want to debate them we can play out Gigantha first but I don't know how good that is we know they can at least just bolt themselves and get the land in, and, and like they have it if they want to kill Corvold it's theirs alright we have all the lands and one Gigantha so not great if they kill Corvold we're in bad, bad shape oh, okay opponent got greedy well, that could be the mistake that loses them the game. Get greedy and you lose. Happens sometimes. Alright, so now we've got Woe Strider. We're going to sack. During combat, we're going to sack the goat. Get a token, draw a card. All right, now we made a slight mistake here because if we're going to make the play of sack the Woe Strider, we might want to do it at instant speed to get the extra counter on Corvold. All right, so kill Chieftain as opposed to Krenko. I mean, Chieftain represents actually more power on the attacking end next turn. Corvold's now very far out of range. We did not get punished because we were able to now use the extra mana from the tower on the Cauldron Familiar that we drew off the Corvold. So, never punished. This deck bails me out constantly. Alright, that's a Wily Goblin, but really nothing in hand. And just a bunch of 1-1s. One -ones. So, manageable. They're going to swing in here. Let's see. All right, so two little gobos. One cauldron familiar to chump. Now, interesting question. Can we get to lethal next turn? Don't. We're going to need to draw something. I don't think we have it. I don't think we have the lethal next turn, but good thing is neither do they unless they really rip something, unless the top card of their library is exactly Muxus or, you know, exactly... War Chief or Chieftain, rather. So this is just going to be exile one of the cats and get a Strider from the yard. Other cat sticks around. Hoping to draw maybe an oven, which we can't even play right now. 5-4. Goat token. 
sack it to the uh, sack the land to the Corvold since we have so much land flooding out super hard. Draw another land. Okay. Uh, this time we'll sack this during combat to put another counter on Corvold. Get them to two. Yeah, the game was really decided when they just did, they didn't go for it with killing the Corvold. That was just a they wanted to you know they wanted to do the splashy thing with Krenko, so sometimes you get punished for that. What you got, opponent? You got two life. What you got? I got four lands and two non-lands. So, get with that program. Corbel drawing me all the lands here. I mean, they can maybe rip something. Let's see. Guess it wasn't good. Alright, that's game. On our way to Mythic. Let's go. Yep, we're going to play. And you know what we're doing. I mean, we've got the swamp. It's like it's telling us to do it. Okay, some kind of weird Abzon counter deck. Abzon plus one plus one counters. Take the Mentor. Mentor is the enabler. Gets their creatures outlandishly big. Play the trail on two. Only lands left in hand. Might not have been the best of keeps. But, you know. I see turn one thought sees. I keep turn one thought sees. I'm a simple person, okay? Person of simple taste. Uh, so it's by Gigantha or play the oven. Just play the oven. I'm not casting Gigantha next turn anyway. This is rough. We're already at 13. Good gravy. Alright. Take it down to 8. Shaley, Dean of Radiance. Well, see, the problem with Devil here is that we have to... We can't... The best is when you get to, you know, get a creature with a land. But I can't do that here because I need the red off the Fable Passage. So that's a bit of a tilt. Yeah, opponent had a pretty busto draw. I was not able to disrupt it effectively with Thoughtseize. Not sure if Pelt Collector is the right choice on that, but maybe it was. Seems like it might have been. Put a couple counters on Luris, make it a 5-4 kitty. Meow. No attacks. All right, opponent sitting pretty doesn't want to attack. So now we just keep drawing lands, which is pretty rough. And we're probably pretty dead next turn. This is going to have to go face, which feels really bad. Oh, okay, yeah, they're going to sack the devil, sure. I mean, we're pretty desperate, so... Take the second devil, sack this, kill mentor, take eight minimum, they gain two. Yeah, this is just not a contendable position at all. Flooding out. All right, so what's bad? Uh, Thought Seize was pretty bad. Binding is pretty good. Claim is pretty good. Doomblade is good, except mm -hmm. for it's not going to hit Winding Constrictor. Fatal Push is good. No, cool. This is not that good. Wait, why'd you put those in? Not sure why. I guess just because, maybe just because life gain? Is that, is it's kind of a racing matter? They didn't show us any graveyard stuff, so I'm not sure what I'm doing here. Alright, so cut to Cauldron Familiar, cut to Witch's Oven, call it a game. Just on the off chance that they're that they're a graveyard strategy, that doesn't make any sense. That's terrible boarding. <sighs> All right, still learning how to sideboard. Play first seems good. Yeah, we can just high roll Corval with this turn with this. 
Turn they'll just turn three corval with us. No, the question when you turn three a corval is what do you sack, right? So we're gonna have three go three gooses, three geeses, and I think the thing is we're just gonna sack one of the geese to Corvold on the entry. And then probably similar on the next attack, we'll just keep sacking geese or you know, if we can make a food token maybe and then sack that. Alright, so Blood Crypt was the wrong choice. I should have just Dark Boar Pathway and put down both geese, but I guess there's some argument to the fact that we need black mana available um, for like a kill spell or something. So we'll just use one of these food tokens to cast the goose and we'll be down a food token. Some inefficiency there, but... Yeah, that's not the best, I don't think, but we can do. Alright, so opponent just right there. Not much to do. We're going to play Corval now and it's going to be over, so... Sack a goose. Sure. And opponent wants to go to game three. Makes sense. Really not coming not any coming back from that. Alright, let's see. Do I want Doomblade? I think I do. They don't have a ton of black creatures. Oh, this really hurts that I left in Clothis and Witch's Oven when I could have just had like I don't know, a Liliana's defeat even, or just more cats. This was very poorly boarded, but again, the deck bailed me out. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm pretty much bound to keep any hand that has Gilded Goose and Trail of Crumbs. It's a nice little engine. You run out of food quick, but... It is a little engine that could, for, like, you know, make sure you hit your land drops type of thing. Alright, so turn one Goose. Turn two... What? Okay. Yeah, no block. Down to 17. Okay, so push is pretty good. Um, swamp. Goose. Push the Constrictor, I think. It's going to be long-term the biggest problem, the Constrictor, I think. Yeah, we might as well. We're not blocking, so... Might as well just get Harvest on non-land. Pull an oven, okay. Alright, second winding constrictor. Feeling a little bit foolish now. Probably was the pelt collector in retrospect, down to 14. Alright, so shock overgrown tomb in. Use the one remaining food from the goose. Destroy pelt collector. Let's not, let's not repeat the mistake of the fatal push. Opponent getting in with the Constrictor. Down to 10. Grab our red mana. Let it enter tapped for Clothis next turn. Here's our trail. Here's our land. Now, do I want to play Oven here? Or make a food? Hmm. I think play Oven and then draw off the Goose with the food, maybe? I don't know. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Alright. Really not hitting any land drops is the opponent. We'll chump and draw with the trail. Draw a permanent spell. Um, guess I'll take lantern. I don't know. don't have the land for 
both the Strider and the Clothis. So unless I draw untapped land here, wasn't going to be able to cast them both. Alright, so Gadrak is fine. It'll brick wall the Constrictor. Play Gadrak, play Soul Guide. Or just make a food. Either way. Exile a card. No attack. Alright, there's another Constrictor. You got a land? Might need that. Nope, no land. Alright, so Clothis, Windmill Slam style. Pay the life, draw, or uh, rather make a, make a token with the goose. Only a couple of pips off from getting Clothis active as well. Opponent's seen enough. Alright, we're almost there. One more victory to Mythic. No, can't keep this. Way too many land. Yeah, that's kind of the core engine of the deck if you want to start pinging off little little creatures. I think we'll put back a passage here. Bottom the passage. Lead on the oven. Ah... Inquisition the oven. Seems I can't get away from that passage. So lead on Cauldron Familiar into nothing. Feels pretty bad. Alright, opponent is on blue black. Play tap stomping ground, attack for one, be sad and pass. It's rogues, okay. They're not gonna block here. Or they are? No, they're not. Yeah. That would have been one of the more surprising blocks in all history. Alright, Black Bloom Rogue's going to make it tough. With That Menace is going to really be a problem. So, Shock in the Tomb. Which I shouldn't have done. I should have just done Crag Crown. No attacks. Pass the turn. Take three at least. Maybe more. See how much they can mill me. Ugh. That is just so tilting. Must have just drawn it. Yeah. Okay, we're just... Yeah, we're super dead to their nut draw here. <coughs> Alright, well... It's the start of something. I'm not sure what. I think we need to kill the Black Bloom Rogue has to go upstairs because I don't have any more triggers. This looks very bleak. I must say. Don't know if I'm ever going to be able to weasel my way out of this one. This has to kill the Black Bloom Rogue though. Because that has me super dead next turn. I think I'm still pretty dead. Maybe I can draw something next turn. Just chump with the cat, pray they don't have removal. Seems risky. Buy Gigantha. I have nothing. <laughs> that's what G that's what buying Gigantha says, by the way. I have nothing. So rather than let that mana go to waste. Alright, so opponent Mausoleum Secrets for Thoughtseize? Ouch. That, that hurts, opponent. Why, why would you do that to me? Block with the Familiar. And we're pretty well cooked here. 
Well, that I mean, that's interesting that you do that. How do we want to proceed here? Binding. Get the Thought Thief. No. No. Trade with the Thieves Guild. Okay. Ping off for one. So you're saying there's a chance. They don't have, if they don't have into the story, there's a chance. They didn't cast it yet. All right, I'm out of cards. What do you got, opponent? What kind of top decks you got? Not very good ones, apparently. Well, don't worry, neither do I. Just gonna attack for one, down to nine. No reason to hold this. Come on, deck. <laughs> Come on, deck. You're saying there's a chance. Oh, for the love. Oh, fine. It's a non land. I can't complain. No attack. Which is oven. Drown it in the lock. Alright, well I guess it could be worse. Uh okay, it's worse. Just got worse. Alright, they want to play something. Oh, there's a draw. Do they have counter? They do not. Do they have kill spell? Really? Really don't? You drew four cards, you don't have a kill spell? You're kidding me. I should not. I, I don't know how I won that. That was... Won that through, like, the greatest flood I've ever seen. Uh, Thought Seize? No. It's pretty bad here. Duress, on the other hand. Sure. Fatal Push, yes. Liliana's Defeat, yes. Claim the Firstborn, oh heck yes. Gadrex a Brick Wall, bring him in. Well, I mean, Clothis can at least pick off the Graveyard a little. Binding, they're just going to counter it, right? I mean, it's sorcery speed, it never resolves. Same with Corvold, really. It's kind of tough to resolve it. Yeah, let's get that Gadrek in there. If they're going to be milling us, then we want to keep the Woe Striders. But we can get rid of some cats. And some ovens. Let's try running it like that. This is... Probably not right to board out the cats, by the way. I need to stop doing that. But if you check out the match review that Airball posted of one of my matches, uh, not one from this video, but a different match, um, you can see him giving me that advice. So that's something I learned post playing this match that I've been boarding it wrong for like the first 40 matches. Somehow still managed to come out around 60% win rate after 50 matches, but that didn't hold for long. <laughs> Fell back to Earth. All right, the world's worst rogues opponent. Do we keep this? I don't think so. It's a pretty terrible hand. Yeah, this is much more keepable. Bottom the passage. Lead on the goose. Let the goose loose. Opponent's got thought seize for us. Take the corporal. Get it out of here. Okay. Can we just Gadrak now? I don't think so. I think we're gonna wait on Gadrak. Yeah, we're gonna definitely kill this though. This is as dead as Dornail. Mill a couple. Ah, they're good ones too. That feels bad.
blue mana. Got any plays? <laughs> One more to go for what? Clothes. Okay, yeah, a good one. It's going to make it tough. You're just going to find one of them. It's a one for one trade. Good job. What a waste of free mana that was. It's a, never been a more effective way to, to time walk yourself than a turn three on Mordigo. Alright, so now the opponent's tapped out. They can't use their counter magic. Yet another reason they shouldn't have done that. Basically nothing is what the opponent has. You want to counter my oven? No, you want to kill my Gadrak. Okay. Fine. Just make food. Seems fine. Inquisition my claim. Yeah, you can do that. I don't really need to do anything in response. Make a food. And draw land. All right, really good at drawing lands. No attack by Giganta. And just beat down with it. I think that's really the plan next turn is just don't draw the land. I'm just gonna use Gilded Goose to cast the flipping Giganta. Oh boy. Opponent taking two to draw a card. Duresses the binding. I don't have any targets for it anyway, so it's fine. All right, we drew the land. So just Windmill Slam Gigantha. Basically done here, right? Oh, wow. The world's most expensive into the story? Jeez. Feels bad. Another Goosey Goose. So not good if they draw a kill spell for Gigantha. Be in some trouble then. Make a couple food with it, but that's about it. Spyglass on what? Goose? No, the oven. Okay. Yeah, because we were doing so much with it. Since I took out the cats anyway. The heck does that matter? Might as well gain some life here. I've got nothing else to do. That's a card. That is a magic card. Spyglass is an odd one. And concede, okay. So we 2 0 the Weird Rogues player. Seems good. Number 793 or 739. Pretty good. Yep, we're gonna play. And I think we've got sound back for this one, so that's awesome. I'll put that hand back and get a new one. Yeah, this is better. Put back passage, turn one, harvest for a land. It's going to be close, but we'll make it. All right, what, opponent, what does the opponent have here? Snow-covered planes. All right. So it's maybe the nine lives solemnity combo deck. I think we want to get class down if we're going to be playing control opponent. Really, class or trail are both good picks to put down here, but class is going to pressure them more directly. So that's what we want to be doing here. All right, Birth of Melitus is going to make a wall on their next turn, but right now it just fetches them a planes. All right, do we get Cat Oven down? That's probably the best play that I can make here. I'm not going to be sinking uh, any mana into class, which means I'm not going to be able to attack through the wall very easily until maybe like my turn four, or, uh, or sorry, maybe like my turn five. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, so opponents got their 04. Defendor. Vanishing Light. Interesting choice. What's it go after? It goes after the oven. Okay. 
Didn't use that oven. Now I'm gonna hang on to that trigger so I can use it off the trail of crumbs on my next turn. So Banishing Light is very susceptible to binding here. No, don't do it now. Ah. All right, so pay for tr uh, pay for the money. For the uh, sorry, pay the mana for class. Attack with a one one and a three three. With that counter. They block the three damage with their wall. Play out the trail. And raid the magic gods for a land off the top for Corbold. What's next, opponent? What's next? Okay, opponent's in the tank for a while. And plays Gideon of the Trials, really? Defend yourself. Yeah, boy, they are a real control deck, huh? Alright, well we drew a land, first. but it's not quite the one we want. Both at Gideon. So we can do level three of class, but I think it's better just to draw off the trail. Grab a goose, play a goose. Yeah, okay, so that's basically the argument for doing it on our turn, right, is that we might draw one drop. Now, interestingly, we can attack down Gideon with the goose using the class. So if you wanna get frisky with your goose, you gotta have your ranger class available at level two. Opponents on some Heliod nonsense. Huh. So that puts the suggestion of Solemnity Nine Lives now off the table if they're a Heliod deck, they're looking to get me dead with creatures. So pile up some counters on that wall. It's gonna be a Corvold. Sack a what? Sack a wolf? I don't know. Sack a land even, I have so many. Pack a forest. No, a swamp, it looks like I'm gonna do. Yeah. Alright, binding on the banishing light gets me going again with the cat oven. Once again, we really failed to pressure Gideon whatsoever. Should have just used the goosey goose. Yeah, I feel like this is all pretty wrong. Do the same thing we did last turn. Now, interestingly, they obviously can't do both Corvold and the Wolf with Gideon. So they're going to need to use something here. Get rid of the Corvold or get rid of the Wolf. Okay. Let's draw a card. If that's the way it's got to be, opponent. And we will beat you through this wrath. So Binding's got to take Gideon, I think. Ooh, Strider's a good way to build back. Draw Cat. We could also just get back Oven with the Binding. That's an interesting play. All right, so Gideon becomes a 4-4, four, four, attacks down. me down to 19. Binding on the banishing light, get back my oven, play out my cat, block whatever comes, 
and then look to get on the offensive next turn with Strider and Devil. I'm not sure if that was the right move. Maybe Gideon was the thing I needed to take out. But the thing is, if they try to target my Gideon, or if they try to target my Cauldron familiar with their Gideon, it's they're gonna be sad. Like I'm just gonna leave, let it have have it leave the battlefield. So I think their play here is just not that great, but they're gonna have to turn into a 4-4 and turn it sideways. Have it do anything on the board this turn. Does damage prevention I don't really have any damage that you need to prevent right now. Oh, criminy. Faith's fetters targeting the oven. <laughs> Alright, let's run a cycle of the oven. So gain four, put a counter on your Heliod. Sideways, attack me down to 16. Alright. So that's the plan, huh? Not great. So, we did draw the land that we needed for Strider plus Devil, so we'll do that. They're going to be able to stop me doing much with the Devil on the turn that it gets Death Touch, because they can just prevent the damage by plusing Gideon on it. But I'm pretty okay with that. I, I'm not a fan of Gideon attacking me anymore. So if he's plusing on things rather than attacking, I think I'm doing okay. Get a food sacked here. Can't really use the ping too well, so we'll just ping down Gideon a little. You're full of surprises. Bit of drain gain. Pass it over to the opponent. Alright, so oven is currently disabled. Okay. Well, that's gonna be tough. Lyra also turns on the Heliod. Heliod doesn't do much. Uh, because we can just block it with a goat token and sack the token. So yeah, they're gonna plus Gideon here. Boom. Okay, that's good. You love to see it. So they're just to trying to prevent disaster first. there. Now, do they attack? Yep. All right, that's a very bold attack. I don't know if I agree with that. Oh so, yeah, just chump with the goat token, sack the token to the Strider. Doesn't do anything, but it's got to go somewhere, technically. Alright, that's the card we needed. Now, to target the Gideon is a mistake, because we can just attack Gideon. Once the Lyra's gone... Yeah, again, this has been prevented, but it's got to go somewhere. I think the target is Lyra, and just attack down the Gideon. So, Heliod goes away. Four damage to Gideon. Oh, great. The class helps us finish him off. See you, kids. I have let all of you down. And by Gigantha with the rest of the turn. All right, opponent. You got another sweeper. We got. Tank, tank, tank. Uh, that doesn't really do much to its ability, by the way. Triggered ability, so that doesn't matter. It's not an activated ability. 
Nahiri's Binding in Mythic. Let's go. Opponent's seen enough. We go to game two. How to board against this mono white deck is an interesting question. Um, this is the new and improved version of the sideboard where Shifty can come in and Gigantha can come out. I do think we want Noxious Grasp because it's really good against everything, every single creature in their deck. We really miss like a way to murder uh, or like murderous rider a planeswalker here uh, that feels bad not having anything but binding for that mm. i don't know how good any of the graveyard hate stuff is i don't think they have much of a graveyard synergy uh lava coil does not kill a lyra so i don't think it's good scorching dragon fire can probably come out too honestly because all it can do is like finish off a planeswalker it really can't do much beyond that Yeah, Force Landing is a way to, to deal with Lyra, for sure. These claims are terrible. Let's just get rid of them. And maybe run it like that. Maybe cut a Dragonfire for a... Thoughtseize. Try it like that. Well, this will be a tough to deal with uh, permit as well. We'll run one Clothos just to get him. All right, opponent, opponent is running down their entire clock before the game. So this is not a keepable hand. This is also not a keepable hand. Okay. Put back a passage, put back a Corvold. Lead on the goose. Passage back. Could put back binding. Could put back the strider. Or it could turn to the strider. I think I'll put back the Corvold. Alright, opponent, let's go. Want to play magic or not? Yeah, sorry I didn't get the uh, game where I made it to Mythic into the video this week. It's just that was a really weird game. Uh, basically, my opponent must have disconnected because they had the winning combo in hand for Neostorm and just never cast it. And I ended up thought seizing their hand and they just gave up, conceded the whole match. And that's how I got to Mythic. So not really, it's kind of a non-game, so that's why I didn't make the video. Um, not really something I wanted to show because it's just not, not, much, entertain not much entertainment value to it. But um, you know, it's always a bit of a shame when that kind of thing happens on the, the, the last couple of notches to get to Mythic. And that's gonna do it for the opponent. All right, back to numbers. And I'm back with Jund Sacrifice. So you can see we had some good success with the deck on the ladder. I think my overall win rate was over the course of about 50 matches, somewhere in the 60 to 62% range. I played really well for a while with this deck. Of course, I came back to Earth after I think about the 50 game mark, uh, 50 match mark with it. Um, and then started to kind of drift back toward below 60% um, with it. But there was a really good hot streak with it, and that was part of kind of what you saw here. Um, you know, just kind of got lucky with the matchmaking algorithm, giving me some little bit lower ELO opponents. And um, unfortunately, that's sort of corrected recently. I've gotten pushed back down to the percentages. But I'm trying to fight my way back and qualify with top 1,200. I know the next um, MIQ is going to be a sealed one. So I'm really excited to play some sealed in that, uh, if I can make it. So we'll see if I qualify for top 1200. That might actually figure into next weekend's video. Uh, we'll have to wait and see how that all plays out. Uh, in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed watching us play Jun Sacrifice. Feel free to you know iterate on this deck as much as you please. Um, and I think it's a, just a fabulous shell at the moment and I'll be enjoying it uh, until the new set drops and we'll see how it figures in the new metagame. Definitely is gonna pick up a couple of uh, cards. Uh, the, there's a one drop squirrel 
uh, that's gonna just get bigger every time we sacrifice a permanent. So that's definitely gonna be a four of in this deck after uh, the new set drops. And you know, who knows what else we'll see in this deck if maybe there's some kind of Yawgmoth variant that pops up. I know Yawgmoth's a very powerful card in modern, but uh, we don't really have the undying creatures to go along with it in combo. But uh, we'll see how it goes, see how things pan out. And I hope you enjoyed watching the Historic Weekly feature again this Sunday. And we'll look forward to seeing you back here again next Sunday. Be sure to like and subscribe the video below. And thank you so much for coming out. You guys are the real heroes, all of you who come out each week. Uh, you folks out there in the world who are so kind to spend your time with me. So this is Evil Empire, signing off.